Hello everyone, welcome back to the game whose name I won't pronounce because if I got it wrong to begin with then I'll be making a further ass of myself by repronouncing it the wrong way. So I'm never gonna say the name of the game again. Ever. Never. Well, unless I'm sure I'm saying it right. But yeah, welcome back to this game, the game in the title. The name in the title. The name of the game in the title. Anyway. I was thinking, hmm, what do I do? And then I decided I should probably just look at the walkthrough because whatever the solution is, it's probably gonna be frustrating to try to find it. And here's what you have to do. Sturdy steak. Let's move this boulder. There we go. I don't even know how I press that because I don't even seem to have arms, but apparently there's somewhere underneath my coat of fur feather stuff. And then... Flow? Okay, yeah, I was blocking the flow. Which... Does something... Maybe it's gonna... the water's gonna fill up and cha Okay, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how that helps me, though. What does that... oh, hello. <laughs> hello, little guy. What are you doing? Oh no, come back up. It's dark. <laughs> not as if lighting up the torch really lights up anything at all. Okay. So... Yeah, what did that actually do, though? What does that allow me to do? Is the water gonna show up somewhere? Oh! It's all ruined. We can't eat this, the short Vata said, waving his tiny arms in the air. Ahem, brother, the beast has returned, the tall Vata said, tapping his brother on the shoulder. The plan, the short Vata cried out. Yes, yes, just stay put and I'll never know you're there. I didn't just totally hear your conversation, I didn't just totally pick up the fat vata and take it over here. Nope. You're all stones. Good job. Floating box. A box was bobbing calmly on the surface of the water. I wonder what's inside of it. The contents of the box seems to be damaged, the small creature said as it took a closer look at it. How can you tell? You haven't opened it yet. Come with me, little box. A small creature reached down into the box and found an old, mushy apple. Okay, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? Uh... What do I do with any of this? I... What do I even need to do? Okay. The sk What does it say? Skulking? Being has clearly expressed that all glimmering objects in the mountain belong to him. Wait, what, what being was that? The skittish men. The rambling woman wants to prepare herself for her love's arrival. There's an oddly shaped rock formation throughout the tunnels. Okay, I honestly have no idea what to do. Copper wire, a flute, a rock, a stringless bow, a pickaxe, a rotten apple, muddy tablet, iron coin, dried flowers, blackberry, and a twig. What in the hell am I supposed to do with this? Would you like an apple foot? No. Alright, she wants to prepare herself, but how does she want to prepare herself? How could I help her prepare? Could I make a necklace with this copper wire and... some... make a berry necklace? No. Make a rock necklace? No. Shoot the rock in this thing. No. It doesn't have any rubber band type thing. Okay. Play the flute! 
which would piss it off and turn me into stone. Um. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's just use the walkthrough. Okay. This is supposed to talk to the Grev... Grev... however you pronounce it. I think I've already done that though, haven't I? Noise, noise, always hammering, striking the walls. Yeah, I have. Loud, foul beings, strike, strike, strike. It is not... They won't leave. Wait a minute. Apparently there's a hedgehog hiding in a dark hole. Where is there a hedgehog hiding in a dark hole? Is it... is it that? Was there even anything there? There's apparently a hedgehog hiding in a dark hole. But where? I see a hole here. Kinda looks like a hole, but I don't see any hedge... where... And even with a walker, I don't know what to do. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's in here. Oh, that's an already eaten apple, isn't it? Oh, oh God. Hi. Since when were you there? Oh, you weren't. You only pop up when I get near you. So there's no way I could have possibly known you were there until I walked up to you. Okay. Hi, you look kind of scary. Please don't eat my face. Would you like an apple? A rotten apple? The creature suddenly realized it had yet to introduce itself. Oh, right. Where are my manners? Hello? The small creature said nervously. The hedgehog took no notice of the greeting, but the creature could hear a faint growl coming from its stomach. I guess it's hungry. Okay. Enjoy the rotten apple, and when you get sick, well, I'm sorry. That was me. The hedgehog quickly snatched the apple out of the small creature's hands and hurried back to its den. In its retreat, it had brushed off a couple of its spines on the ground. I suppose I could take these with me, the small creature said, saddened that the hedgehog didn't seem to want to become its friend. Aw. The gigantic, murderous-looking hedgehog went away. Okay. So I looked ahead in the walkthrough, because I'm realizing that I should pretty much be using it 100% of the time. And once again, as is pretty much always the case, I'm glad I did. I am very glad I did. Can you guess what I have to do? Look at these items and try to guess what I can do. Muddy tablet, some berries, a twig, pickaxe, some stringless bow. What are you thinking? What, what do you think I could do here? If you thought I could combine these spines with the flute to create a comb to give the Grofru so she can prepare herself for her lover's arrival, you were right. The small creature carefully began to comb the gruff Roo's hair, attempting to calm her down. He will arrive soon. Preparations. Yes, I will welcome him. At last, my appearance. What will he see? The gruff Roo seemed slightly more relaxed, letting go of a pair of clamps that she had been frantically grasping. I would ask why, but the answer is, of course, why not? I shall take you, Clamps. As the gruff brew didn't seem to want them anymore, the creature decided to bring the Clamps with it. What shall I do with you? I know, because I looked at the walkthrough. I'm gonna pull a piece of glass out of your petrified foot.
Reflective glass. Never mind the fact that you can see right through it, so it obviously does not look reflective at all. You're apparently supposed to do this. And somehow the glass stays in it, and now you have a mirror. Which makes absolutely no sense, but whatever. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. It'll hurt your brain. It's already hurting mine. Brain pain. Here you go. Looking into the mirror, the gruff fru appeared pleased. I see. Yes, this will do. My love, he will arrive shortly. Too much time being spent hiding what they sought. Striking, hammering. Why? Unnecessary. They are no longer here. And that did a thing. I like things. Where did that go? It went somewhere. Not here. Oh. Looks like it lit up a silver vein. And this Svartolv seems to have gotten off of its chest. What's inside of... Oh. Oh no. Wait a minute, I've seen these things. Yeah, I've seen these things before. Okay. I was wondering if the order mattered, and I guess it does. This one I can solve on my own, I think. Hold on, though. There's somewhere in the back of the walkthrough that mentioned you should give this iron coin to this far Svarl Tulv. Would this allow me to use the smelter? The small creature asked. The Svart Alv bit into the iron coin before putting it into his pocket. Look at that, sticky fingers. You had something of value after all, and now you don't. Fine, don't pester me anymore. Use the smelter. Apparently it has telepathic powers too. Cool. I totally forgot what I came out here to do. Oh yeah, this way. The only thing I can see in that mirror is just, like, one glowing eye. So creepy. Okay. The order. When the small creature moved its hand across the carvings mm -hmm. on the wall, they gave off a faint, almost magical warmth. How do I make it light up? What it... Wait, did I use a rune? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Right, so donkey, beetle, and swirly. Donkey, beetle, swirly. Got it. Whoops. Donkey, beetle, swirly. Donkey, beetle, swirly. Donkey, beetle, swirly. Donkey, beetle, and swirly. After the creature had managed to align the correct combination of symbols, it was able to lift the heavy chest lid. Inside, the creature found a sack of fresh food along with an old metal mug. Okay. I actually haven't read the walkthrough past this point, but I do have an idea. The narrator made very sure to say metal mug, and now the smelter's open, and I know there's a cast here. Maybe I can, like, melt the mug or something? I, I don't know, how does this work? I can't pick this up, right? Too heavy? Yeah, it's too heavy. Um, what about clamps? <laughs> That's not gonna make it lighter. How would that work? No. What if I try to use the pick on the silver vein? I seriously doubt I have the strength to even use a sil to use a pickaxe. Thief! Sticky fingers, this belongs to me! All of it! The Svartalv yelled as the small creature moved closer to the silver vein. 
Magical, shining, glimmering, wanting me to have it. You, you shall have nothing. Um, apparently, oh, I just looked at the walkthrough. Apparently, I, every single time I look at the solution, I'm left scratching my head thinking, what? Apparently, I'm supposed to go back here and give the tools to them so they give me a saw blade. Here? I'm not mis misreading this, am I? Oh, supplies. The beast is back, brother. The tall Vata whispered cautiously. Remember the plan. The short Vata responded with a clenched jaw. But it's presenting us with fresh supplies. The tall Vata mumbled as his mouth began to water. Hush. The beast can do whatever it likes. Be quiet while I try to distract it. The short Vata responded, throwing an old saw blade across the cave. As they turned silent, the small creature carefully picked up the shining object while leaving the supplies beside the stalagmites. Stalagmites. Never heard it pronounced that way. Just a slightly different... Slightly different, um... Uh, what's it called? I forgot the word. Stress, that's it. Yeah, just stressing a different part of it. Okay, now I have a saw blade. What can I... Oh, I could probably use that on the passageway, right? The blocked one? Blocked with, I think, wood? Hmm. Okay. Um. What the hell do I do then? What can I saw? I mean, I guess I could melt melt it. Why melt it into what? Spreading thick smoke throughout the cave. Okay, well, I just looked it up. Apparently, I'm supposed to combine this with that to... But how does it even... What? What's holding it together? Is it just a snap-on saw blade bow combo? Are they modular? Is everything in this world modular and it's made to fit? I... Okay. Maybe now I can do the wood thing. The only thing stranger than the creatures in this game is the puzzles. Or are the puzzles, I guess would be the correct grammar on that. Actually, no, I think the correct grammar would be the only things stranger than the creatures in this game are the puzzles. Yeah, there we go. Grammar for the win. Using the saw, the creature managed to create a hole large enough for it to pass through. I am continuously impressed by the strength of this little furry guy that appears to have no arms. Whoa, that's the head of the petrified man. Man giant. Ooh. Okay, let's not press the creepy rune. That makes it sound like it's going to steal my soul and crush me at the same time. Ew. Ew, why did I press it again? I'd rather make the creepy noise than do that. Actually, maybe not. No, make it stop. Whoa. There's a crack. Does it do anything? Can I... Nope. 
Hmm. Can I talk with the Burgristy? In the middle of the chamber, there was a large head half buried in the cave floor. Burgrasaur are dangerous, enormous beings long since forgotten by most folk. Long ago, they sought shelter deep within the mountains, remaining in an endless sleep to shut out the sounds of man. Well, I can respect that because people can be pretty damn noisy. Can I pet the head? Come here, I'm gonna touch you. Do you like As that? You the like creature that? creature moved its tiny hand across the huge head, it could feel a strange warmth emanating from it. Do you like it when I pet you? Do you like it when I stroke you? Oh god! Is it... is it alive? The small creature whispered, looking anxiously to the Alva on its shoulder. How... How can I look at the Alva on my shoulder? If I turn my head, I'm just... it's gonna move with me. How... you can't look at the Alva. How... that's not possible. You can't, they're not, they're, they don't look disconnected, I guess, I mean, they look like they're all part of one part, like if you turned his head, his head is like the whole top half of his body, maybe she's covered by fur, I guess. I don't know, it just looks like one continuous unit. Anyway. Um, ooh, I have roots. Which actually just looks like logs. I guess they're so big, maybe they practically are. Um... Okay, what? A mug of berries. Hmm. No. What if I throw a rock at your head? Hmm. No. No. Let's see what the solution is. Okay. I'm kind of fascinated by how bizarre they can make the solutions to these puzzles. It's actually kind of funny. Can you guess what I'm supposed to do? Look at what's in this room. Hmm. There's this root. And it's got some sap. So, what do, what do you think? What could I use sap on? If you said coat the rock in sap, you were correct. No, Never mind, I'm just kidding. I must have misread that. No, actually, that's what it says to do. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. I missed a step. The small creature used the saw it had assembled to cut through the thick root. Now you use the rock on it. The creature quietly watched as the thick sap engulfed the rock, coating it in a golden layer, quickly hardening from the cold of the mountain. Right. So now I have a sappy rock, which apparently looks like some sort of a gem or something. What, what am I doing with this? I mean, what? Oh, that's what you do with it. You give it to the greedy Svartovs. Svar... Svar... Svartov? Svartov? Here you go, it's gold. What's that you have there, sticky fingers? Wherever did you find this gem? The Svartov's eyes fixated on the amber. It's glowing. I need it. Give it to me. The small creature pondered what to do as the Svartalv continued. What? Well, how about this? I'd allow you to take a small piece of ore from my silver vein. How does that sound? A small chunk? What do you say? 
Before the small creature could answer, the Swamp Hound quickly put the amber into his pocket. A trade is a trade, now leave! I've already said you could have a small piece of my silver ore, if you can get it out of the wall, that is. The Swamp Hound grinned as he kept his hands protectively over his pocket. Great, so let's get some silver. Using the pickaxe, the creature managed to chop off a small chunk of silver ore. Then apparently I need to melt it. The creature put the small chunk of ore into the hot smelter and waited as thick molten silver poured out from underneath it. Pretty. Then apparently I make an improvised thingamabob. A dipper. A big dipper. The creature carefully filled the dipper to the brim with molten silver. And I'm just going to take a guess here and say I probably put it inside of the cast. I don't even know what I'm making a cast of, but let's try it. As the creature poured the molten silver into the cast, it cracked, making it possible for the small creature to push it aside. As the cast was removed, a shining silver bell was revealed. The sound of bells, especially ones made out of silver, are said to be horrific to certain evil beings. Okay. Should have seen that one coming. Of course this cast was for a silver bell that causes evil beings to go crazy. I will take you, silver bell. Trying its hardest, the creature managed to pick up the heavy silver bell. So, what do I do? Just, like, ring it in front of the Groof, 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 Run? Groof, Ruff, Run, no Run? What's your name? Groof, Run? I don't remember what its name was. I believe that thing is supposed to be a thing of evil, right? The Groof, Run? Groof, Run, Run? I can't freaking pronounce these words. Groof, Run. Groof, it... it I don't know. It, it needs weird mouth shapes to make those noises. It's uncomfortable. Groof, Run. Groofrin. 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 Oh, forget it. Hmm. Alright, what do I do with that? Uh, could I hang it using that? No. Hmm. I'm assuming I need to actually use the bell to make noise. Oh, okay. Uh, apparently I need to use it on the burgrissy. Wakey, wakey, oh god. As the sound of the silver bell resonated throughout the cave, the ground began to quake. The previously lifeless Burgress had awoken from his long slumber, enraged by the noise made by the small creature and its friend. I don't think it's happy. As the mountain continued to shake by the Burgress's movements, a part of the cave wall began to crumble, falling apart before the small creature's eyes. I look even smaller than normal. The view is surprisingly zoomed out. Burial ground. Stone door, ravine, night sky. Let's take a look at the night sky. 
The thick cloak of darkness still shrouded the night sky. There was no sign of dawn coming anytime soon. Whoa, wait a minute. Is that the hag I can see up there? Is that where I came from, originally? I think that's the hag. Or it's... A hag. Or certainly some sort of creature. Hmm. Right, it's the creepy noise button. Ooh. Fireflies or something. Roots. Robust roots had burst through the rock along the mountainside. Roots can certainly be tenacious. They look to be able to hold quite a bit of weight, don't you think? The small creature asked the Alva, who didn't seem too fond of being so close to the cliff edge. I don't blame her. She's, after all, on my shoulders. And she doesn't have any wings, so if I fall, she's going down with me. The path leading into the mountain had been sealed with rocks and rubble during the earthquake. The fallen rocks were too large for the creature to move. Can I do something with these roots? The creature attempted to pull the root out of the ground, but the earth's grasp was too strong. Let's go check the stone door. Ah, it's another natrum. Is it the same natrum or a different one? A natrum with one of its eyes gleaming unusually bright was sitting on a stone. That must be the... well... I mean, I suspect it's the same one because that's the one I gave the, the eye to, basically. However, it was the other eye I gave it. Because remember, it was facing right and it was its right eye. And now it's its left eye, so... I wonder. Pet the bird. Pretty, pretty, pretty bird. The small creature did not want to ruffle the natrum's feathers. Aw, but I want to ruffle them. I feel like ruffling. I'm in a ruffling mood. Hello. I think we've met before, haven't we? The small creature asked the natrum, who was already busy studying it, twitching its head back and forth. A great ordeal fleeing into the devouring darkness, yes. Many shapes and figures lurking, yes. Ready to assist the darkness. Cannot get out. Sounds, sounds echoing from the depths. The natrum croaked and went silent for a while. Then, as if it had forgotten something, it continued. A light, a blinding light, yes. Leading the way out to the open sky. The darkness conquered, sealed away with rocks and stones. Safety! The natrum croaked and stared into the distance. What will happen down the road? The small creature asked. Is there a way for us to find what we seek? The natrum stared at the creature for quite a while before opening its beak. As it was about to answer, it stopped itself and slowly closed its beak once more. What's the matter? Is something wrong? The small creature asked, feeling a chill go down its spine. Once again, the natrum stared into the distance before turning to the small creature. This time, it spoke. Unspeakable horror, no. But yes, what is being sought for can be found. A cave? Evil? Wicked? No, nothing remains but unspeakable horror. Nothing remains, no. The natrum croaked before suddenly taking off, as if in a hurry, disappearing into the woods below. Bye, I natrum. Hope he's not right this time. The small creature said to the Alva as they watched the natrum disappear among the trees. Man, I'm hearing some really strange sounds in the forest. I wonder how they, I wonder what they used for these sound effects. It's actually really interesting, very strange sounding.
Just random nature recordings, maybe? Different species, different... Kind of creepy. Really eerie. Almost sounds like something's crying. Like some sort of ethereal cry coming from the forest. Also, I noticed that the stone door, these look like teeth. Which isn't comforting. This looks like a mouth. The large stone door was far too heavy for the small creature to budge. A door that looked to have been created out of solid rock was sealing off the path into the mountain. I bet you there could be some sort of treasure in there, the small creature said, giving its friend a hopeful look. Aw, cute little dude thinks something good is actually going to happen to him. That's so sweet. Some sort of a puzzle? Hmm, yes. How does this work? And what are these? Whoa. Okay. Can only have one at one time. I'm guessing I lack the information to actually be able to solve this yet. Yeah, I can only have one at one time. I'm guessing there's an order. It's interesting. So these are singles. Whereas the ones at diagonals actually do the all three. Those cries are creepy. Whoa. What did I just do? Okay, you can press that thing. What the... Oh, maybe I don't need more information. What the? What is it doing? What is it doing? Is it resetting? Okay. So I'm going to come back to this. I'm, I might have enough information to do it. I might not. But I'll come back to it. Some sort of mechanism on the ground in front of the large stone. Let's go to the ravine. Vitorm. It, um, looks super friendly. Can I pet your fangs? No. Okay. Glowy. Watery. Nothingy. This one doesn't work. Let me check what's around here before I talk to the Vitorm, assuming I even can talk to it. Ooh, looks like I can't pass. The wet soil had collapsed, dividing the area in two. I would say, can't I just jump? But I actually don't think I can. It doesn't look like I'm built for that. I'm no kangaroo, that's for sure. Jumping over to the other side would be too much to ask from my tiny legs. The small creature thought as it looked down at the mushy soil beneath its feet. Roots. Hmm, could I put those over? Hmm, no. Not gonna work. The 
Vitor slithers through the darkest areas of the land, drawn to places of power where it rests to shed its skin. The skin of a Vitorm is rumored to retain a strange kind of magical power, and anyone that manages to get their hands on one should be careful not to look into its entrancing glow for too long. I wonder if I need its skin. Can I pet it? As the small creature moved closer, the Vitorm opened its mouth and gave off an intimidating hissing sound. I guess not. Can I talk? Hello? The small creature said cautiously, daunted by the terrifying beast before it. The Vitorm quickly jerked its head in the direction of the sound, staring into the small creature's eyes as it slowly waggled its head from side to side in a hypnotic fashion. What do we have here? You should know better than to approach me, meat, the Vitorm whispered menacingly. I could swallow you and your friend there in just one bite. Uh, I didn't mean to disturb you. We're just trying to find our way through these lands. The small creature responded, slowly backing away. The Vitorm gave the creature a suspicious look, analyzing it from top to bottom. You should consider yourselves lucky my hunger for food is quenched. However, my appetite for riddles is insatiable. Oh You're God! Of course. Than a mouse, but smaller than a bear. Let's see if your mind matches your size. This one I heard told in times long past. Well, I'm screwed. I am reborn amongst my siblings. Together, we are one. As I rise, I can see all of them look up at me in my newfound form. I travel together with my brothers and sisters as I fall, crashing down with them on the roof of the world. I slowly make my way down as more of my siblings join me. It is close now. I am reborn. The creature stood silent for a while, deep in thought. I don't know, it said with a disheartened look. Tsk, that one isn't even hard, the Vitorm quickly retorted. Stop wasting my time and get out of my sight before I grow hungry again. Believe me, you don't want to be here when I'm hungry. Right, a gigantic evil snake that also has an appetite for riddles just as big as its appetite for creatures. Now I've seen everything. Actually, no, I'm sure I haven't. There's probably going to be more. Which is awesome. That's what I like most... Whoa, Jesus. That's what I like most about this game. Calm down. Calm down. No need to get up in fangs. I shook the burial ground. That looks like a tree creature. Which also looks sad, maybe because it's had its entire upper body cut off. Although if it did have its upper body cut off, then that means its lower body is actually its face, which means the rest of its body is actually above its head, which is kind of strange. Hmm. Moist moss. <gasps> My favorite! You know just what I want and just what I like, nature. I love you. The top of the gravestone was covered in thick moss. Come here, moss. It sort of looks like that stone has a hat, the small creature said to its companion, uttering a giggling noise. The creature peeled off some of the moist moss. Gravestone. A number of old gravestones were scattered across the marsh. 
Hmm. I need someone to pass. Something I see over here looks like it might be a hint to the puzzle at the front of the door. It looks like a panel sort of thing. I'll have to check it. If I can get over there. I wonder who's down below, the small creature stated, looking down at the ground. The creature looked around the smaller graves, but could find nothing of use. All right, let's try the runes. Oh, it's a little worm. That appears to be made entirely out of dots. What are you made out of, worm? You look like you're made out of beads. Oh. Well, that's handy. Okay. The small creature could feel a strange presence in the marsh, but just as quickly as it appeared, the shape faded once more. Yeah, this is turning into the creepy rune. Made that gigantic head make breathing noises, and now it makes a gigantic ghost appear. As the creature approached the bison, it opened its eyes looking around to find the one who had awoken it from its sleep. Okay, you look pretty terrifying, but you're kind of rooted into the ground on account of being a tree and all that. So I ain't too worried about you. Oh, no. Bisons are beings that usually remain in deep slumber in the rare event that they awake. They spend their time tormenting travelers and woodsmen passing them by. Once they grow tired of causing trouble, they resume their sleep, blending in with the surrounding trees once again. I guess you're a god of the annoying trees? Very strange. Gravestone. A number of old gravestones were scattered across the marsh. I wonder who's that. Let's have a chat. Bisons of Oops. Hello. The small creature said politely as it moved closer to the bison. The bison gave the creature a look of disgust but did not answer. Who are you? The creature asked, feeling slightly discomforted. The bison seemed to have lost interest in the creature and looked away. Feeling a slight tug on its ear, the creature took another look at the bison. What is that cut on your head? Does it hurt? It continued, even though the bison hadn't acknowledged its past remarks. The bison's face suddenly filled with anger. Its eyes started to roll in their sockets. Its mouth writhed and twisted with pain. Oh, I'm so sorry. It must really hurt. The creature said. Is there anything I can do to help? The bison seemed to have calmed down, giving the creature an insensible look before continuing its hysterical tantrum. We should search for something to heal that grievous wound, the creature said to the Alva, who responded with a determined nod. Uh, I have some roots. Would you like a, would you like some moss? Hmm. How, how do you heal a gigantic wound in a tree? Hmm. I... Plant some flowers in the crack? Hmm. No. The shame I can't get I can't get over here. Maybe I'm not supposed to, but this looks awfully like it's supposed to be some sort of a something I need to read or look at. But maybe not. I, I can't.
Maybe I can cover the roots? Mm. No. Cover the tablet. Oh, whoa, that actually... What the hell? Wait, what? I, I used the moist moss to wipe off the ancient tablet? Why didn't I just dip it in any of the hundred sources of water I've come across so far? Apparently I needed moist moss to do that. Okay, um... Wh what does it say? What do I do with an ancient tablet that has writing that I don't know what it is? Hmm. Hey, here? Hmm. No. Give it to the... The Riddlin Snake? Hmm. What am I supposed to do with that? Right, I think it might be time to solve this puzzle. Hmm. Hmm. No. And it doesn't seem to help. Hmm. And what are these lit up over here? I'm a little bit intrigued by this. I kind of want to try to solve it, but I feel like I don't have enough information. I, it's like, what are these up here? I don't know what those are. They don't appear to correspond to anything I have. Or anything that's on here. Okay, do I need to get... How does this work? Okay, so that freezes whatever's there. So I'm guessing I need to get all of these matched up, correct? Oh, R for reset, okay. Right, so I need this one here and... Oops. And this one there, and the eye thing here, and this thing over here. Okay, so I need to get them all matched up. Gotcha. Gotcha. And if I just do this... No, okay, so you have to have, you have, to have something lit up before you can move it. I still don't know what these in the top left are, though. They don't seem to be relevant. Okay, one off... Let's see. Let's try this. Right, so that'll get two of them. But then when I do it again, like how do I access the other layer? There's multiple layers. What if I do this? Okay, but if I keep going that way, it's never gonna... In fact, I need to rearrange those entirely. So I could freeze this and do this? Wait, what? No, go, no, what, what, no, what are you doing? What have I done? It just reset, didn't it? Yeah, okay, I was close. At least I seemed close. I'm not entirely sure how to access all the different layers. I don't really know. Maybe, hold on. Am I selecting to only move that one? Is that what I just did? So if I wanted to move the eye, I would select the eye. Okay, but then it might be obscured. So to unobscure it, I can what? 
Okay, I'm gonna mess around with this for a little bit more, and I will be back when something happens. Okay, hold on. I think I actually have it. I think if I do this right, go to the right, I think I... Yes, yes? Yeah! Only took me about 10 minutes. But I got it. That is very satisfying, gotta admit. Let's go into the creepy ancient chamber that looks like it's going to bite me in two. Please don't chomp down. Whew. What the hell? Upon moving through the gate, their eyes still adjusting to the darkness, the pair began to perceive a dim light stemming from the center of the chamber. Lodged in what appeared to be a crudely carved altar was the cup of Sigrin, decorated by etchings telling of acts long forgotten, a golden chalice which corrupts what is poured within it. Yet the pair had no way of knowing this, but simply marveled at its beauty as they remained still for a moment in the cold chamber. Oh, would it really be all right for us to take something like this? The creature looked at the Alva, whose big eyes reflected the cup's glow. I suppose it's of no use to anyone around here anymore. It continued respectfully removing the chalice from the indentation in the altar. Beautiful, beautiful treasure. Sigrin's cup. Or Sigrin, however it's pronounced. And a pile of bones. And a creepy large skeleton that looks like it's watching. It probably saw me take it. Oh... Wildfire, thunder, river, steam, rain, tornado? Hmm. I sense a puzzle coming on. But anyway, before I continue, on this kind of cliffhanger of a room, I'm actually going to end this episode here. So, I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.